Hello! Today we are making some jumping spider enclosure decorations. The people who watched my last jumping spider enclosure video seemed to really like it, and that was exciting to me. So here is another one. This isn't anything fancy or bioactive, but still fun. I show you how to make that little pod at the top corner that can be used as a hide, the mushroom background piece, and the air plant floating holder that is in both of these little display enclosures. And that is the first thing I show you how to make. These are all the materials I use, and it's honestly the easiest one I'm going to show you today. You just glue a magnet to some cork. I make sure to use really, really sturdy magnets, and I use a hot glue gun because you don't want anything falling off and hurting your, your spider. That would be devastating. So I just glue that on, make sure it is nice and sturdy before moving on to applying the air plant to the cork bark. I just use fishing line. It's sturdy. It's You can't see it. And that way you don't have to glue air plants to things because that's such a pet peeve of mine. I hate when people sell air plants glued onto things. I don't know if it's actually bad for the plant or not, but it feel, feels bad. So I just use fishing line. It works great. And I think it looks great. I always want live plants in my enclosures, but if there's no substrate in the enclosure, I can't exactly plant plants. So I think air plants are a great solution to add some color and liveness. And I think it's so cute. Obviously this is it alone in the enclosure. I think it's so cute. I obviously made a couple of them because I have a couple enclosures. And it even has a little space for the spider to hide in. That's where my jumping spider has her hide, her little web currently. And the next one is the mushroom one that I showed in the beginning. There were the materials on the screen. This one definitely took a lot more time to make, but I think the re end result was really cute. I just used some brown polymer clay and I'm making a wood type background. I think you could probably use real wood too, but if you're baking it, I just don't want to cause a fire in my house. So I am just creating fake wood out of polymer clay. Does it look perfect? No. I'm just creating texture with a needle tool to start out with. I'm just making it, you know, have the creases and texture that wood often has, or cork often has. I don't really have much of a plan with it, I just kind of went crazy. And then I had these chalk pastels that I shaved some of the chalk off and applied it to the crevices to give it some more dimension and shading and such. I think it definitely made it look more realistic and less flat. I used the colors brown, green, and black to create some sort of an effect to make it look natural and just more dimension. This is definitely op optional and I'm sure it would look fine without it, but I'm an overachiever and that's okay. Again, not too much of a strategy. I just kind of put colors where I think colors would go. Mainly the outside and in between the lines for more dimension. This trick will also come in handy for the actual mushrooms. So I do personally recommend the chalk pastels, but you can definitely make it work without it. Here's before baking, and then I make the actual mushrooms. I have this kind of cream colored one, clay, that I roll out into 
thin strands that is the base or, or stem of the mushroom kind of flatten it out at the end kind of have it you know mushroom shaped make sure it's able to stand on its own pretty much then I make the head of it <laughs> I used two different colored clays here. I had one that's a little bit darker that I used for the top and the same the same lighter clay for the bottom to create the effect that mushrooms have to shape it to mushroom shape. <laughs> the little dome and to make sure it fits, make sure it looks nice on top. This is when I put the lighter clay on the bottom and I even create the texture on the bottom like mushrooms have. This blend blending tool is super duper handy for flawless, I wouldn't say flawless, but a nice blend between colors or just pieces in general. I definitely recommend a silicone blending clay tool, but again, I'm sure you could do it just fine without it. Once I make it the right shape, I use this little dotting tool to create a place for the stem to go. And this is where I also create the mushroom texture underneath, just the little flares, lines, you know the mushroom texture. <laughs> I just make sure oh this is where I put more chalk pastel on top I think it makes it more natural perhaps because mushrooms do have kind of a gradient effect and I think the chalk pastel does a really great job enhancing that and then I just find a place for it on the clay wood background that I made once I find a nice place for it, I use the same blending tool to secure it onto the background. Once it is secured onto the background, I use the same chalk pastels, just a brown chalk pastel, to put at the base of the mushroom to just kind of help blend in the colors, make it look like it's not just attached let me make it look like it's growing out of it if that makes any sense i don't know but like i was starting to say the mushrooms don't stay up very well on their own this shot is pretty good but i will tell you a solution of how they how i made them stay up in the position that i wanted once i bake it i made a bunch more mushrooms and to keep them all up i just put the tin foil in between each one and once I baked it they were all in the place that I wanted them to be and it looks so rough but the spider won't notice <laughs> anyway then you just glue a magnet to the back and call it a day <laughs> although it's very messy I do think it's really cute once it's in the cage in the enclosure and now we're on to the next one, which is honestly my least favorite, but maybe you can do it better. <laughs> this is, I suppose, a nut pod. It was inspired by Feral Creations by Nate. I'll put his Instagram and stuff below because he's actually very talented at making jumping spider things. But I just had a ball of tinfoil. I made brown clay into a thin sheet, ripped a hole in it, put it over the tin foil ball, created a little lip for the opening to make it look a little bit more natural. Blend in that with the same blending tool. We love our blending tool. And then I created some texture in the same way that you do the wood from the mushroom one. There were also some little rips and stuff within 
the pod that I just extra clay and then just blend it in the situation and you'll never know. No one will know. I really don't like the shape of it or how it really turned out but again this is just inspiration for you to one-up me and I think that's lovely personally. Here's the texture situation about again really no strategy just don't push too hard because then you'll rip the clay all the way and that's not the plan that can be your plan I suppose but that wasn't my plan you keep it light you're just creating some texture and there's not much to really say about that this one seems like it would be so easy to make but it was so time-consuming after the texture situation I did the exact same thing I did with the mushroom one which is use chalk pastels to create dimension again I just darkened the edges and some creases and just tried to make it look as natural as possible my goal with all of my cages and enclosures is to make them look as natural as possible even when they can't be bioactive. I have yet to put a spider in an enclosure that I have this decor in, so I don't know if I actually enjoy it, but I do trust Nate, who made something very similar as I mentioned. And he definitely gets all the credit He's definitely the creative one behind this idea. I take zero credit for this idea. But I just made it out of clay, and I believe he 3D prints his, perhaps? I don't know. But he's very talented. <laughs> so then I bake it. Here's how it looks before baking. And this is where the trouble happens. Because um, it's very hard to get the tin foil ball out of hardened clay. I edited so much out, but trust me, this took forever. But just pry it out with some scissors and it, it won't be too hard. And lastly, and the tin foil left horrible texture on the inside. It's not sharp or anything, but if yours happens to be sharp, sand it down or something. And then I just added a magnet because of course I did. And then we are all done. And that is all of them. That's all that I had prepared. I don't think it looks horrible once it's in the enclosure, but it's definitely my least favorite that I made. I hope yours turns out better. <laughs> Once everything is in though, here's me putting my jumping spider Mary Jane into one of the enclosures just for fun. Thank you for watching. Um, I really hope it inspired a little. I do really enjoy making decor. I really love clay and I think it's really fun. But I definitely recommend trying something out from here and show me if you want. You know where to find me. And it does seem like Mary Jane enjoys the new enclosure. But like I mentioned earlier, sadly there is no one to inhabit the other enclosure that has the two things that I made out of clay. So that was very silly of me. But I thought I was going to get Mary Jane a boyfriend and then I didn't. But that's okay. She's a single woman who I love. And I hope you love her too. Because she loves you. Goodbye.
BAIK